Hi everyone, welcome to Carpe Diem Sailing. My name is Marco, I'm a Sail Canada cruising instructor, and in today's video we're going to be covering how to read tide tables. While the title of this video is Reading Tide Tables, I also want to develop an understanding of tides, and specifically, I want to point out the difference between tide tables and current tables. We're going to keep it pretty basic, so if you already know how to read a tide table, you may want to skip this video. Coming up is a time lapse I shot at my home marina with a duration of 7 hours and 28 minutes, and 14.4 feet, or 4.2 meters of tide rise. Let's start by defining some of the more common terms that you need to understand when reading tide and current tables. Tide. Driven by the gravitational pull of the moon and to some extent the sun, tides are the vertical movement of water. Tides rise and fall, they relate to water depth, and are measured in feet or meters. They are expressed as low or high. Current. What I mean here is a current driven by the tide rising or falling, not ocean currents like the Gulf Stream. Tidal currents are the horizontal movement of water and relate to speed and direction. They are expressed as ebb or flood. We care about currents when going through narrow tidal passes and in areas with tide rips. It's important to note that tides and currents have a semi-indirect relationship. I don't want to get too complicated, so suffice it to say that you should use a tide table when looking for depths, and a current table when looking at flow. We will be doing a video on how to read a current table in the near future. Chart datum. This is the water level that depths, or soundings, displayed on a nautical chart are measured from. Different authorities use different data, so it is important to understand which datum your particular authority uses. In Canada, for example, the Canadian Hydrographic Service uses lowest normal tides as chart datum. United States tidal datum is mean lower low water and can differ from Canadian datum by as much as 1.5 meters or 5 feet. Depths are always measured from chart datum. Drying heights are features exposed by the low tide, in other words, the intertidal zone. And once again, in Canada, Elevations, such as bridge clearances, are measured at HHWLT, or the highest of the high tides. Be sure to check the elevation datum for your country. Reference ports. Make sure to use the correct reference port for your area. In our example, we will be using Vancouver. Daylight savings time. Some publications use standard time. Others add the time in. The official tide and current tables published by the Canadian Hydrographic Service use standard time, so during daylight savings time, the extra hour has to be added to the tabulated data. Private publications, such as this Ports and Passes, have adjusted their data for daylight savings time. Now let's look at an example out of Volume 5 of the Canadian Tide and Current Tables, the official Canadian government publication. Here we see a tide table for the reference port of Vancouver using Pacific Standard Time, and since tide and current tables are usually published in the same volume, make sure that you're using tide tables for tidal predictions and current tables for tidal current predictions. Let's take a look at the tides on Wednesday, July 3rd. At 12.05, we had a tidal height of 0.2 meters, or 0.7 feet. This is a low tide, since the tides before and after are high tides. Even though this is quite a low number, it is still added to the charted depth, so in this example, this spot in Vancouver Harbour would actually be 8.6 meters deep at 13.05 when we account for the hour of daylight savings. There are also private publications, such as this one. 
This book covers a very large area of the coast, and the time adjustments have already been made. This is now my preferred publication, since I only need the one volume. It is also packed with extra information relevant to boaters. You can see that the data is the same, with the exception that feet are favored and the time has been adjusted for daylight savings. Rule of Twelfths. Now I want to take a quick look at a rule of thumb to help you determine intermediate depths of tide, or depths in between, tabulated high and low tide. As with all such rules of thumb, it is a rough estimate. If you desire specific numbers, there are tables that can be used. But for most cruisers, the rule of twelfths will work. Just be sure to be conservative. Here we see a low tide of 0.85 feet and a high tide of 15.42 feet. This gives us a tidal range of 14.57 feet. One twelfth of that is 1.2 feet. So the way the rule works is that the tide will rise or fall one twelfth in the first hour, two twelfths in the second hour, so an additional 2.4 feet, then three twelfths, an additional 3.6 feet in the third hour, another three twelfths in the fourth hour, then back to two twelfths in the fifth hour, and finally one twelfth in the last or sixth hour. As you can clearly see here in this graph taken from a tide app, the curve is steepest in the middle, meaning the greatest rise and fall happens in the middle two to four hours of the tidal duration. And that brings us to the end of this video. If you enjoyed the content, please give us a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel. If you have subscribed and would like to be notified of new releases, make sure to click the little bell icon next to the subscribe button. And why not check out our website for more comprehensive online courses? Thanks for watching. Until next time, I wish you all fair winds and following seas. Be sure to check back for our next video on winches and how to handle them safely. Till then, I wish you fair winds and following seas.